Hello, everybody. So by popular demand, I'm going to do a quick uh, take on Devon AI. I saw quite a few comments out there that you guys want to hear my take. And so rather than, you know, retreading stuff that um, my peers and friends, other AI uh, YouTubers are talking about, I'm just going to give you kind of my personal perspective on it. Um, so I watched their their little demo tutorial and it was it was pretty cool. Um, now, what I will say is that I've known I know people that have been working on this kind of thing since GPT-3. Um, and so for me personally, it's like, oh yeah, that's neat. But it's also like, yeah, the old hat. Now, what I will say is that back in the days of GPT-3, when we first had instruct aligned models, this was much, much harder. We had smaller context windows. The models weren't as good. And so really kind of the, the, the key takeaway here is just give it time. As context windows get bigger, as models get smarter, as they're more aligned and more able to do things, these kinds of things get easier and easier and easier. Now, what I will say is that the UX and the and the consolidation of tools here is actually kind of the interesting part. So when I was still with my startup, and that ended over a year ago, um, but the, the startup that I was with, one of the things that we realized was that it's about people, processes, and tools. And actually, I did a lot of work um, kind of developing a theory as to okay, what is it that like that you bring together? And so creating a coherent workspace in the way that they did. And so if you're not familiar, if you haven't seen the demo, it's basically like you have a chat window and then um, Devin has a like terminal um, and then a browser and like a debugger code or whatever. Anyways, but so you have this workspace that is pulled together and this workspace that Devin has is it creates all of the affordances that you need. And that's really kind of the secret sauce here. Now, unfortunately for these kinds of coders, there's no moat because the real powerhouse behind all of this is the models that they, de that they depend on, whether it's from OpenAI or Meta or you know Google or Amazon, whatever. Because once you see the UX and you see like you can see everything that's happening, it's really easy to, to duplicate that UX. Uh, now, there are going to be some things that can be hidden behind a moat in this. And so what I mean by that is let me just show you some of the some of the projects that I've been involved with. So this is Agent Forge, um, which is done by some some folks in various communities that I've been a part of. And so Agent Forge was originally created. Um, they were kind of inspired by some of my work on co cognitive architecture, and they took it and ran with it. Um, and they've done a couple demos. They've, they've participated in a few um, hackathons. Uh, but basically, the idea was to be able to instantiate agents that can do anything. And they've been working on this for a while. Now, of course, agents are all the rage right now, um, so on and so forth. But you can see their code. It's all out here up on um, up on GitHub. And they're, they're still updating it. They're still working on it. They've kind of slowed down uh, for various reasons. I'm not going to, like, talk about anything personal. Um, but they're still working on it. And so the idea here, though, is that um, what we've been working on and when I say we, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I've done um, the ACE framework. Um, I also did like an agent swarm, and then I talked with um, with Dr. Chi Wong from Microsoft, who did um, who did Autogen. And so all of this has been coming. And for me personally, I have not necessarily been interested in purpose built agents, um, like agents that can only do one thing. Um, now that being said, the economic va uh, value of something like Devon whatever its productivity is, like some people are, are saying like, it's not that much better, um, but it's a first start. And so the economic value of something like Devon that could like fully automate, you know, a junior dev job away, there's a lot of economic value there. But from an intellectual standpoint and a scientific standpoint, what I've been more interested in, in is cognitive frameworks or cognitive architectures that can solve all problems. And so that's what the ACE framework is. Um, that's what we're working on. That's what Agent Forge is. And that is what um, Autogen is, which is basically how do you create a cognitive framework that allows for these language models to embody every aspect of a project, whether it is risk management or financial coordination or project planning, um, as well as the coding. And so that's kind of what we've been talking about. And I've actually had quite a few people um, in my community ask about ACE framework. And kind of one of the jokes is, is um, like an MBA or you know business people looked at it and they said, oh, your ACE framework, here, let me show you what I mean. ACE framework, let's see, where's the, uh, there it is. They said, oh, this is like, this is, this is a perfect org chart for a company where you have the aspirational layer, which is morality, ethics, and mission. And then you have environmental context and strategy and so on and so forth down to actual task prosecution, such as, you know, writing code, doing unit tests, 
you know, shipping, you know, uh, packages or whatever the, the input output happens to be. Um, so again, all this is, all this is, has been pretty, pretty predictable from my perspective. Um, so that's why I'm like, yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to jump on the bandwagon and say like, you know, oh, it shocked everybody. And again, that's not throwing shade at Wes. Um, we, we, uh, we enjoy each other's content. Um, and also I understand how the algorithm works. So I know exactly why you did that. But anyways, this was super not shocking to me whatsoever. Um, this is just, you're going to see more and more of this. Now, what I will say is that, um, Devin as, as like the first, like fully fledged commercial offering, that is pretty interesting. I thought that GitHub was going to get there first with GitHub Copilot. I, I had expected by now that you could just go to a repo um, like this and you just like have a chat tab up here. So like imagine you got like discussions and issues and stuff. And actually this is what we were going to do. Did I open a tab for the agent swarm? So because because GitHub has APIs, when I was still working on the agent swarm, I was actually thinking, actually, what if we use a GitHub repo as the single source of truth and just have a bunch of agents interacting with it, such as having agents open issues and pull requests and discussions and updating projects and wikis and documentation and, and creating actions. And that's what when, when OpenAI released their, their GPTs, we actually started working on that. I was like, what if you could actually have autonomous or semi-autonomous agents actually all participating collaboratively on a GitHub repo, because what is the point of software engineering? What you really want is a, is, is, a, is a complete repo that is easily deployable. So this is, if anyone out there is watching in the entrepreneur space, whether you're at Google or Microsoft or Amazon or wherever else, like this is the direction you should be going, where, you know, whether it's a GitHub or even just a regular Git repo um, or any other, uh, any other, you know, code uh, uh, change control platforms, Jira, those sorts of things, all of them have APIs. You should be pointing your agents at repos um, and make sure that you can pull all the knobs and levers and push all the buttons on these repos um, because this is where the real productivity is going to be. I don't your your agents, they don't necessarily need a UI. Instead, what you probably need is just a dashboard where you've got a whole bunch of agents um, and you just say, hey, like, you know, swarm, go do this, you know, figure out what's going on here. Because this, as a con as a concentration point, as the source of truth, you say, okay, here we can test this line of code and this file and that and so and so on and so forth. So, anyways, my recommendation would be use a repo centric um, method of development. Because then, you know, whether it's Devon or something else or whatever, you could actually have agents from different providers um, all pointing at repos. I think that's going to be what we should standardize on. Um, and again, we were kind of working towards that, but um, you know, I'm too ADHD to stick with any project for too long. Um, that and once I saw Autogen coming up, I was like, okay, the professionals have got this. Um, and I was talking with uh, Dr. Chi Wong, great guy, by the way. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of that's kind of long story short. Is you know, it's it's cool. I'm glad to see that that we're we're getting some more um, some more commercial deployments. Um, but you know, it, it still kind of falls short of kind of what I had hoped to see by now. And again, I think GitHub really, really dropped the ball, um, with GitHub Copilot because I'm like, guys, you have the repo, you have like, you have the repo platform, you have the API point your agents at that. So anyways, I'll get off my soapbox now. I've said that enough times. Um, but yeah, so that's it.